Welcome back everyone to another episode of Tie and Gig Builds. Today I'm going to show you how I got live scores shooting on my scoreboard. This scoreboard was made in a previous build, so if you're interested you can take a look. But today I'm going to go over the programming involved to get live scores streaming on it. So if you're interested, stay tuned, it's going to have a lot of Python programming and Raspberry Pi set up. Boom! Okay, so let's get started talking about the repository. This repository is an exact copy of the other repository we were talking about in the previous video. The only difference is we added two new files. One is the draw scoreboard live scores.py and the other one is requirements.txt. Now I go over in detail how to set this repository up in a previous video on the scoreboard, so I'm just watching that if you want to know how to do that. But today we're just going to go over draw scoreboard live scores.py and requirements.txt. Now, requirements.txt includes two requirements. It includes the bibliopixel requirement, which allows us to draw letters to the screen, and it includes the sports.py requirement, which allows us to get live scores to the screen. The bibliopixel library is talked about in a previous video on message boards, so I'll link to that if you're interested. That video shows you how to get this set up for the message board. It's exactly the same as the scoreboard, so I'll link that if you're interested. The sports.py one is a new one which we're doing in this video, which will give us, it's an API that will give us access to live sports scores. So let's just start with trying to install these dependencies here. Three install requirements, requirements.txt. Okay, you'll notice I get a permission error, so I think I just gotta run this as sudo. Great, so it says it's successfully installed. Now with the install going great, we should be able to run it. So if we do sudo python3 draw scoreboard live scores up high. You'll see that it is in fact running and working as expected. Now there is a debug that I just added, which is just to print out just the games that were retrieved in current and Every time this animation runs, it'll run and iterate through the loop here and then grab the games again and repeat. Let's kill this. Great, so you'll see that the install actually worked and ran successfully. However, if you did get an error saying a module not found for sports.py, the reason is Python installed sports.py in a directory that is not found in the typical path for Python. So you need to move those files. The way to move it is to simply go into Python 3, import sports, print out the sports location, and then move sports directory and every file from there into a path that Python is able to find. Now, in order to figure that out, you'll need to run the draw live scoreboard dot live scores dot pi file, and you'll have to print out the path for Python. And to do that, you just do import sys sys dot path, and this will be a list of directories that Python searches to find this module. So, if this location does not match up with any of these locations in the path you'll need to move the sports directory to any of the locations in the path. There is another dependent directory you'll have to move also called diffuse.xml and this will also have to be moved into one of the directories that makes sense. Great, so let's walk through the code really quick. This code is very similar to the last project, draw scoreboard update.py, except we're getting live scores. The only difference is we're doing something a little advanced and that's we're just running the request to get games in a different thread. Now you may be wondering why are we using this sports library? There's probably a bunch out there. Why'd you choose this one? Um, this is the easiest to work with that I could find and also it's free. A lot of the ones that have a lot of data that you can look at, they have a fee attached to them and so this is kind of one that's free and doesn't have any limitation on requests. So if you want to do this yourself, I suggest using this directory. Now to walk through the code, what we're doing here is initializing everything for the scoreboard. I went over that in a previous video so you could take a look at the details in that video. However, you could see for the animation, this is the scroll delay for the names running across the scoreboard. 
and this is the duration for each match. So you'll need to set this appropriately. If you want the names to scroll pretty quickly, you'll have to, to decrease this time. And if you want the duration of the scores to be on the board for each game longer, you'll have to increase this time. Here's where the magic happens in terms of getting the scores. So we'll get the live matches first. We'll get every game. In this case, I just chose baseball and basketball, but you can adjust that accordingly. In a new thread, we get the latest games. And this is important because we don't want to block the animation while we get the games. At this point, we'll go through all the matches in the game, and we'll just set the scoreboard appropriately, at the end of which, once we loop through all available matches, we'll set the matches to what the async matches gave us, which is the call to get the new games at the beginning, and this will repeat. So these games aren't exactly up to date, given that we're making an asynchronous call, and the data itself is out of sync by like maybe 30 seconds to a minute, so depending on your duration of the, of the delay between game showing, it could be about one to two minutes off, which is fine because if you're given a free library, that's pretty dang good. Action! All right, that wraps it up for this one, folks. Thank you for watching. If you found what you, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe. Consider joining our Instagram following for updates throughout the week. I am very pleased with the result. It's not updated the nearest second, but it is the nearest minute or two, and that'll do just fine for us. We love to bet in this house, so we're gonna place this in the living room and just let it go by. <laughs> Hopefully no one breaks it. If you like what you saw today, we make very similar content, so you can check out our previous videos. You might find those interesting. Next week, Gig and I are gonna build a woodworking project. The week after that, we're gonna do another tech one. Until next time.